Okay, welcome back. We are in late July 1852, uh, which is where we left off. And I haven't passed turn or done anything yet, and I've left it um, a couple of days. And the reason for that is, well, I'm procrastinating <laughs> about what to do next. And I'll explain why. Let's kind of frame this, really. We're focusing specifically on the Western Front, I think, with this report, because I want to kind of present uh, my strategic quandary uh, to you uh, for consideration. Um, I will pass turn, I think, later this evening and upload uh, the results um, tomorrow evening. But uh, yeah, I'll frame the kind of strategic quandary with. Uh, well, let's have a look at a bit of a, sort of. Uh, let's have a bit of an after action, I think. On so uh, well, the war began in what March, uh, March fifty two, and the opening move by Russia about a month into the war was to plunge headlong towards Adrianople. We successfully defeated that. Um, in a good defense, inflicted 40,000 casualties. And uh, Rita Pasha, of course, didn't exploit that, um, allowed them to kind of you know, slip, slip the net, really. He did conduct a counterattack. The Russians fell back to Romelia, but secured the rear. We then um, really kind of, in order to mitigate Rita Pasha's caution, broke our army up into its constituent parts, into independent army corps, and launched a campaign through Romelia up towards Varna uh, to try and inflict a decisive defeat on the Russians. Now, Abdul Karim's corps was the first to kind of make contact. It was quite badly mauled, but following sharp on his heels was Omar Pasha, who at that time was a lieutenant general, and he inflicted, I mean, a pretty devastating defeat on the Russian force. It, it, his kind of maneuver really um, precipitated a kind of general collapse of a part of the Russian position in Romelia and in Varna. And likely the army in Romelia uh, would have possibly depleted what it had of its ammunition reserves on Abdul Karim's force. Abdul Karim's force was, of course, badly, badly mauled. It was switched out with a reserve corps in Adrianople. And Abdul Karim's original corps now has received replacements and is back up to scratch. We had to break Abdul Karim's force off because the Russians landed a kind of diversionary um, sort of force in Constantinople. So Abdul Karim's force was broken off, sent to Constantinople dealt with that, uh, completely destroyed the Russian force there. He's been congratulated for that, and that is in the bag. But the diversionary force did have the re desired result. Nearly a third of our army is in Constantinople and is six days' march from the main army. It's between a third and a quarter. In terms of infantry forces, it's a third. But in terms of our combined army strength, it's more like a quarter of our army. So Omar Pasha's army, the army he has just been given command of, is ever so slightly light. It has about 65,000 men, in addition to that, 15,000 cavalry and 386 guns. Now, the quandary that I have is what I do with this force now, given that it's ever so slightly light. In addition to it being a light, Omar Pasha's former command, which is the Imperial Guard, which bore the brunt of the fighting, successfully I should add, through Romelia into Varna, and then had to relocate from Varna back into Romelia to achieve force concentration, is somewhat disorganized, fairly understandably. It doesn't have a commander. We do have a commander en route. That is Ahmed Pasha, a lieutenant general who spawned once Omar Pasha was promoted to take command of Rita Pasha's field army. Um, so, yeah, we, we don't have our full staff command in place, and we have about a quarter of our entire command still in Constantinople uh, that needs to move forward. It's six days' march from Romelia. The force that's positioned to the north of us, which is besieging Plevna, is a pretty substantial force. It is the remains of the army which had initially moved towards Adrianople, which we defeated in Romelia. It's the remains of Pashkovich's force combined with the strategic reserve of a number of divisions that they brought down uh, from Constanta, from Odessa Constanta. And we now have a pretty large force there. Uh, that force was about 100,000 infantry 50,000 cavalry and 630 guns. It suffered 25,000 infantry casualties, so it's going to be down to like, what, 75,000? It's going to be down to about 43,000 horse and about 500 guns. So it has sustained casualties. A number of its regiments were destroyed in an attempt to take Plevna, to force Plevna, um, in the last fortnight. Uh, it is considered a, a Turkish defeat, rather curiously, because we still hold the town. We only suffered 13,000 casualties. I mean, on the surface of, a surface of it, this is a fairly convincing Ottoman win, and yet it's considered a, a defeat. The only reason I can think that is that the fortress is partially breached, and perhaps a portion of the Russian force is inside the citadel, 
they they basically breached the thing which gives us a significant defensive advantage. That's my thinking, and this has compelled our defensive force to break contact, perhaps to retreat to some kind of inner sanctum within the fort fortification or something like this. It's the only way that I can really arrive at the fact that it's it's a Turkish defeat. So that's the state of play. Even with the casualties the Russians have suffered, they still have a substantially larger force than that which we currently have uh, under the command of Omar Pasha. He is activated. He is prepared to engage in an offensive action. Uh, but I'm anxious not to kind of exploit that advantage uh, or that availability, if you like, uh, to then kind of, you know, just having commanders that are aggressive doesn't mean that you want to use that aggression to guarantee that they engage in kind of calamitous defeats. In the next fortnight, my suspicion is that the Russians are likely going to force the issue at Plevna. I think they're probably going to take the, the, the Citadel this time. Um, their casualties could be as high as 25,000. They might suffer even more casualties. They might suffer very few casualties. The fortress is breached now, so some of the defensive advantage of what is really, you know, these are only fortress, red, uh, fortress divisions inside. Um, the advantage the defenders ha had has been a little bit kind of offset now. They might take it fairly comfortably. Once they take it, they take control of the depot in Plevna, which will provide them with supplies and allow them to conduct further operations into Bulgaria, into the kind of uh, into our Balkan territories. So we want to stop that happening. The three options we have then is to set to either an offensive or an assault posture. I'll go with the difference between these two in a moment. Let's say we go to an offensive posture. Russia attacks on day one, takes um, takes Plevna. We move um, Omar Pasha's force and just go ham. We basically look to engage this Russian force, which is larger than our force, but slightly disorganized. It's just come off really what was, you know, objectively an unsuccessful attempt to take Plevna. So it's a bit disorganized. Uh, we can see that supplies, probably its ammunition, are somewhat depleted. Uh, we move uh, through Varna into Plevna and we just go ham and engage the Russian force, which is much larger. Well, not much, it's, it's about, you know a quarter or a third larger than our army it's definitely got a, a manpower advantage now how could this go if we set to an assault or an offensive posture we might engage this army um right on the back of its attempt to take plevna if it unsuccessfully attacks plevna um, its organization is going to be even lower it's going to have suffered more casualties and its supplies are going to be lower and we might end up looking at a sensational victory you know think of what omar pasha pulled off about a month ago it could be even bigger than that uh we could you know inflict fifty thousand casualties um we might you know this might result in an entire collapse of this force uh the remnants of it probably falling back towards constanta in constanta they do have an additional strategic reserve that's been built up it's about thirty thousand men ten thousand cavalry and 40 guns we can see that a lot of these forces appear to be irregular forces and they uh, they're guarding um the supply train which is partially unsupplied this is probably the remnants of um Pashkovich's old supply train probably in the next fortnight this supply train will receive supplies from odessa my thinking is um so yeah best case scenario it could be absolutely sensational if this force does take plevna and it's looking like a foregone conclusion that they take plevna we could even set to an assault posture which means that we will defeat any forces in the field and then continue to, to ourselves counterattack and retake the fortress of Plevna. Again, this could be sensational. And if the Russian force, having taken the city, is mostly based inside the city, it's trapped in the city, in the citadel it's just taken. Okay, its supply issue will be fairly, you know, uh, quickly resolved because it will have access to supplies. Although it takes time, actually, for the supplies in the depot to trickle you know it takes you know it takes a period of time for that actually to be organized into the force moved into the force it's not instantly the case this force has access to these supplies uh, the force has to be supplied it takes time you know it requires men to actually uh, get those ammunition boxes open them distribute them to the appropriate parts of their force to distribute the right kinds of equipment the right kinds of foodstuffs and so on and so forth so they won't instantly have access to this which means that in a strange way their supplies might be sort of depleted even though they're kind of surrounded by supplies you know that's not as ridiculous as it sounds i mean there's a really famous incident in the 90s in chechnya where a russian army a uh, russian force was badly defeated by chechen insurgents um because they couldn't actually get access to the supplies that they had uh, they couldn't uh, open the boxes there's a famous 
incident. I think it's Rourke's Drift, a British colonial detachment was destroyed uh, by some Zulu warriors for the same reason. They just didn't yet have access to the supplies. They couldn't open the boxes. They couldn't distribute the supplies properly. So they had ample supplies, but ran out of ammunition. You know, this is not sort of uh, something that is unseen in warfare. So that's the best case scenario from this move. We completely devastate the Russian army. Worst case scenario is... Um, the Russian forces in the last analysis larger. Maybe they don't press the advantage. They don't try and assault um, Plevna this time. Maybe they look to kind of, you know, recoup their supplies, recoup their organization, receive some replacements, in which case uh, they may be well placed to receive us in eight days' time, you know, um, and could end up actually mauling Omar Pasha's force, which is only partially formed, and it doesn't have a command of the Imperial Guard. Okay, fine, we could give... Uh, the, the Imperial Guard to Zarif Mustafa Pasha and release his force, for example, sort of thusly. Um, that would be fine. That wouldn't instantly resolve his organizational problems. These forces, already partially disorganized, will um, experience further disorganization over the next eight days because they're going to be marching uh, through Varna and into, into sort of Plevna. So, yeah you know this force is going to become gradually weaker gradually more disorganized as it marches and it's not at full strength and it could be colliding with an army which is larger than it and uh, this army might sit tight even worse there might be reserve russian forces in odessa that might be moving down into varna it may engage omar pasha's force in varna in a large pitch battle um there might be a you know march to the sound of the guns effect pashkovich's force the large force besieging plevna might get into the fray in varna plus the reserve force you know this could result in omar pasha's force being crushed so it's the bait the thinking behind this move will be the violence of action aggression keeping the initiative throwing the russians on the back foot and it might come off and result in an absolutely sensational victory but it's also risky and uh, we have just engaged in a risky move using Omar Pasha that really paid off. It meant that he was put forward for promotion. It meant that we could give him a, you know, a really good field command. But that field command is not properly formed yet. It doesn't have force concentration. And it's somewhat disorganized. Um, it's really, really good to engage in a risky maneuver sometimes. And they can come off. Doing that continuously, however, will guarantee defeat and can guarantee spectacular and calamitous defeats. Despite the fact that we have probably destroyed a Russian force of, well, what? I mean, 40,000 in the first Adrianople, 25,000 in the second, then the campaign through Rumelia resulted in 25,000 prisoners, 25,000 ca casualties, and nearly two dozen regiments destroyed, means that they have lost a force of already well over 100,000 men. They still outnumber us, you know. So I suppose that's going to be part and parcel of just, you know, fighting Russia. The Russian army is massive, who knew? And they still have an army, despite their losses, that's well over twice the size of ours. So they could easily have armies that have been marching since March from Congress Poland, from the Baltic sort of area, from Smolensk or Moscow or wherever. They could be having a force that, that, that is, you know, in Odessa, which we can't really see, that's, you know, very close to kind of entering the theater. In one sense, that would add pressure to be aggressive. You know, we should move now before they get, you know, before they begin to concentrate all these forces. We should try and defeat them in detail. On the other hand, it means that we might, we should maybe be cautious and ensure that when we do engage in, in action, we do so with all of the forces at, at our disposal and we kind of punch in one location. Anyway, so the first move is that the violence of action, aggression, um, keep the Russians sort of, you know, throw the Russians off balance, even with the forces at our disposal, even though we have a large force still in Constantinople that has not yet arrived, we have a command that's not yet arrived. Do we do this? Do we just go ham and try and smash the Russian army as quickly as possible? Um, that's the first option. The, section, the, 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 the second option then is to activate uh, offensive posture and we go for maneuver and envelopment. We move to Varna and we move into Constanta. In fact, we would go for an assault posture. We would destroy any forces outside Constanta and we would look to destroy their strategic reserve, which is about 30,000 you know, plus 10,000 cavalry plus 40 guns. A lot of these forces are irregular. This would, I think, we would comfortably be able to destroy their reserve in Constanta, retake the town, and pinch off uh, Paskovich's force besieging Plevna. Again, on the surface of it, that looks like a sensational move, and we could even combine that with a mission for force concentration. We could move Ahmed, force, uh, Ahmed Pasha north, um, and in addition to that, we could move Abdul Karim's force north. Um, and we could go with kind of force concentration here, and at the same time... Um, isolate the main Russian army, take Constanta, destroy their strategic reserve, and put this force in a perilous position where it doesn't have access to supplies. But, if this force 
successfully takes Plevna this turn. Their supply situation isn't resolved entirely, but uh, the emergency is, is kind of, you know, offset for them. Uh, the supplies in the depot at Plevna will buy them some time. You know, it will buy them some time to recover their force a little bit. And they could play with this position a little bit. They could then move into Varna or Romelia and isolate our force at Constanta, you know. And they, these, both of these locations have ports, which means that if they manage to get sort of uh, merchants into the trade box in the Black Sea, they can even supply their army using kind of um, maritime means, which would then essentially isolate our force. So it's not clear cut. Furthermore, the Russian AI may have sort of already calculated that this position is a little bit vulnerable. The eastern position, the eastern flank, their left flank is vulnerable. They might move into Varna. They might move back and go for force concentration. We've already seen in the, in, in the east at Kars that they will break, uh, or that rather they will lift a siege if they suspect there's a problem to the rear. Um, so they might lift the siege and think, okay, we can do with Plevna later. Let's secure Varna and Constanta. Let's get our strategic reserve to move south, to hook up with Paskovich's army and get a really large force in Varna. If that happens, we will be looking at a defeat and a defeat in detail because uh, Abdul Karim's force will move through Varna later than Omar Pasha's force. So that could also be a defeat. Uh, again, I mean, it could be sensational. The best result here is that we take Constanta. The Russians try and push for Plevna in the next fortnight, but they don't take the fortress. That would be sensational. It would deplete their supplies and ammunition even more. It would disorganize them even more. It would reduce their force even more. And then they would be isolated. And we could attack them from Constanta, from this region here. And we could, I mean, inflict what would be an absolutely devastating defeat on the Russians. You know, destroying an army of 150,000. Is, is the stuff that ships and street names are named after. It would be a really, really uh, sensational and absolute victory for us if it came off in the Balkans and would open the way then for us to be looking at moving maybe into sort of Odessa and begin to sort of, um, you know, destroy maybe their depot in Odessa, the fortification, maybe organize our own campaign in the Crimea. So it would be sensational. But, you know, if it goes spectacularly wrong, our force, or what, what remains of it, would have to fall back to Adrianople or Constantinople would have to begin to recover. And this would give the Russians then free reign. Uh, it would take, you know, it could take um, a month or more to rebuild a defeated army. We only have one. Um, and Plevna would then definitely fall. And from Plevna, they can move on to sort of um, Sofia and, and Salonika and, and so on and so forth. So that's the second option. It's also risky, but it's maneuver and sort of um, envelopment. That would be the, that would be the kind of uh, the basis for that plan. The other plan, the more cautious plan, is to achieve proper force concentration before we do anything. Uh, that would mean sitting tight. Omar Pasha has just taken this army over. He's just, you know, won a staggering string of victories. Um, and it's earned him promotion and it's earned him the field command of our entire uh, Western, Western army, really. We could sit tight. We could wait for Abdul Karim's... Um, uh, well, Ahmed, Ahmed Pasha and Abdul Karim, we could wait for these guys to come up, uh, join the army, which will take 11 days. That'll give them some time to rest. You know, it's going to give them uh, six days to rest. It'll allow for the Imperial Guard and uh, our forces already in theatre to rest, regain their cohesion and organisation. We're, we're in a pretty strong uh, position supply-wise. Now, if the Russians forced the issue and took Plevna next turn, okay, fine, we would have lost our depot. But we could then be in a position... To immediately follow that up with a counter-attack with a much larger force or a significantly larger force a force that is, is has something similar to kind of parity with what the russians have here which is much more likely to result in a positive outcome it is the more cautious move and i don't want to be the strategic version of rita pasha you know um we have to mix caution with sometimes rash moves and aggressive moves uh, but it would guarantee that we'd be in a position to respond we're in late july now in early sort of early august late august you know with a with a larger force that is rested and organized and we could then we could then do either move i mean the russians if they took plevna they'd probably look to move down towards sofia uh, we could counter them at sofia or we could let's trap them we could look to retake plevna take constanta and get the russians to kind of like spread themselves too thin um so they're the options they're the three options that i'm weighing up do i sit tight or wait for proper force concentration uh, which is, you know, the more cautious move, but the move that's more likely to result in a kind of um, a positive outcome in the long run. 
do I go ham? Try and keep the initiative. Go for all-out attack. Engage the Russian force um, at Plevna. Eight days march with a smaller force. Could be spectacular. Could be you know amazingly good if we press for an assault. We instantly retake the town if the Russians are set to basically uh, attack that town on day one. And if they do it, we take it back and we destroy possibly you know much of the Russian force. Uh, or do we go with uh, manoeuvre and um, manoeuvre an envelopment and try and trap the Russian force that's currently besieging it? Anyway, they're the three. They're the three options. I've not decided. I've got. I've been. I've been pondering it the last three days, and I can't sort of. Uh, you know, we've got the initiative. It's kind of like what we've done so far has been successful. We haven't lost a significant battle. The worst experience that we've had is. Um, Abdul Karim's force was kind of badly mauled. Uh, that was it, now that, that's been reconstructed. We once again have a strategic reserve in Adrianople. That's the advantage of our kind of uh, the plan that we've got of building up a strategic reserve, which we've done. So you know, like um, we are well placed to sort of do something. But anyway, they're the three options. Um, I'll load this video up for this evening. Anyone that's kind of following the campaign, um, any strategic advice or recommendations is welcome. I can't promise I'll definitely do uh, what you suggest, but you know, someone else might look at this and think, oh, well, you could do this. There could be a completely different plan here. Uh, the advantage of the third plan, incidentally, also of kind of keeping Omar Pasha's field command in place and going with forced concentration, is that in the meantime, this does block the Russians from moving towards Adrianople and Constantinople. It's defensive, it stops them from exploiting their position any further south, and uh, there's that as well. But anyway, that's um, that's the kind of um, we've kind of, so we've we've kind of paused uh, for you know um, yeah we're kind of pausing to consider the strategic quandary. Answers on a postcard. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.